All right, so get this. We're going to dive into something kind of amazing today. Oh, yeah. It's the link between exercise and mental health. You sent over some excerpts from a book chapter about this. And okay. honestly, it's already got me seeing exercise in like a whole new way. <laughs> yeah. Like we're really going to uncover how moving our bodies can impact, you know, yeah. depression and anxiety and all that stuff. And uh -huh. not just for a quick mood boost, but like for real lasting change, you know? It is, uh, it's pretty fascinating, honestly, how intertwined our physical and mental states really are. We mm -hmm. kind of treat them as separate things a lot of the time. Right, exactly. But more and more research is showing just how much they influence each other. Yeah, totally. Okay, so before we get into all the uh, exciting details, yeah. let's start with the basics, right? We hear mental health all the time, but yeah. what does it actually even mean? Well, the World Health Organization defines it as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, mm. and is able to make a contribution to her or his community. Mm. Okay, so it's not just about like the absence of mental illness, right? It's about right, yeah. like thriving or, and reaching our full potential. Yeah, it's about feeling good and yeah. functioning well in all parts of life, really. Exactly, it's about emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Yeah, all kind of working together. Yeah, and and what's cool is that exercise can have a positive impact on all these things. Okay, so let's get into the good stuff. Okay, this chapter dives into like the exercise depression connection, right? And it talks about how depression can involve this uh, dysregulation of key neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and serotonin. But, and here's the kicker. Okay. Exercise can actually help regulate those neurotransmitters. It's true. Exercise acts almost like a, a natural antidepressant. It boosts norepinephrine, which helps with focus and alertness, Dang. and serotonin, which, as you know, regulates mood. And get this. Exercise also increases levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. What? BDNF. BDNF. What is that? It's a, BDNF is a protein that's crucial for the growth and survival of brain cells. Think of it like uh, fertilizer for your brain. Oh, okay. And, and exercise helps increase BDNF levels, which can have a protective effect against depression and even promote the growth of new brain cells. So exercise isn't just making us, you know, feel good in the moment, but it's actually changing the structure and function of our brains. It is. Whoa, that's incredible. But um, what kind of evidence do we have for this? Like, does exercise really stack up against medication? Well, there was one study uh, that used a randomized controlled trial, mm. you know, the, the gold standard in research. And they found that moderate intensity exercise for 30 minutes, three times a week, led to a 60% remission rate in uh, individuals with major depressive disorder. And that's compared to 40% for those on medication alone. 60% remission with exercise, that's, that's really impressive. It sounds like exercise could be a, a real game changer for people struggling with depression. It it definitely has the potential. And, you know, it's not just about the intensity of the exercise either. Consistency plays a big role, too. Yeah. Uh, the book mentions that burning around 1,000 calories per week through exercise mm. was linked to uh, better outcomes in managing depression. Now, that, that may sound like a lot, but yeah. for, for a 200-pound person, it translates to a moderate amount of physical activity. Mm spread throughout the week. A thousand calories. So that's like a, a solid mix of walks, bike rides, maybe a dance class or two. Makes it seem a lot more achievable when you break it down like that. But what if like what if someone's just starting out? Do they need to hit that 1000 calorie target right away? No, not at all. It's about finding what works for you and, and gradually increasing your activity levels. Mm -hmm. Even small bouts of exercise can have a positive impact on mood and well-being. OK. The key is to make it a regular habit. So consistency is key, not necessarily going all out from the start. Makes sense. Okay, now this chapter also talks about anxiety. Does exercise have a similar impact there? Well, while exercise benefits both depression and anxiety, yeah. the mechanisms might differ slightly. Um, but research consistently shows that exercise, mm -hmm. especially when combined with cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, can significantly reduce anxiety symptoms. So it's not necessarily a replacement for therapy but a powerful tool to use alongside it. It's like giving your brain a double dose of support. Exactly. And and it's important to remember that anxiety isn't just one thing. There are different types, like generalized anxiety disorder, where you know constant worry is a problem, and then uh, social anxiety disorder, which involves fear of social situations. All right, okay. So how does exercise fit into the picture for these different types of anxieties? Well, for generalized anxiety disorder, uh, exercise can provide a healthy outlet for that, for that nervous energy. Mm -hmm. it, it helps shift your focus away from worries and onto the physical sensations of movement. And for social anxiety disorder, 
uh, exercise can actually help boost confidence and self-esteem, mm -hmm. which can make social situations feel, you know, less daunting. That makes a lot of sense. You're literally building yourself up, both physically and mentally. And speaking of building, this chapter mentions a study where walking was used as an adjunct to CBT for anxiety disorders. I'm mm. curious, what did they find? This study is uh, particularly interesting. It found that adding just 30 minutes of brisk walking three times a week significantly reduced anxiety symptoms compared to CBT alone demonstrating this uh, synergistic effect of movement and therapy. Wow. So even something as simple as walking can make a real difference when it comes to anxiety. That's encouraging. It means you don't have to become a marathon runner to reap the benefits. Exactly. Even moderate activity can be a powerful tool for managing anxiety. And you know what's even more remarkable? Yeah. The long-term impact of exercise on mental well-being. <sighs> but uh, okay. I think that's a topic for our next segment. Okay. All right, so we're back, and I'm ready to uh, explore these long-term benefits of exercise yeah. for you know for mental well-being. We've seen how it can have a pretty immediate effect on mood, but right. what about the long game? Does that like feel-good effect just fade away, or yeah. or is there something more lasting going on? That's that's a great question, yeah. and and it's one that researchers have really been digging into. It turns out uh, that the benefits of exercise for mental health, you know. They extend far beyond that initial mood boost. Oh, so it's not just a temporary fix then. Tell me more. What what kind of long-term effects are we talking here? Well, multiple studies have shown that um, people who engage in, you know, regular physical activity, mm -hmm. they experience, like, lower levels of depression and anxiety. Yeah. And, and just general psychological distress over time. Mm -hmm. And here's the really interesting part. Oh. These benefits... They, they persist, even a year after starting an exercise program. A whole year later. That's a pretty compelling argument for, yeah. you know, making exercise a regular part of our lives. But but what does that actually look like in terms of research? Like, yeah. what kind of studies are we talking about? One study that comes to mind, um, it followed a group of individuals over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And they found that those who uh, consistently exercised, mm -hmm. they, they reported, feeling less, you know, depressed and anxious mm -hmm. and just, just generally more content with their lives, mm -hmm. even a year after the uh, the study ended. Mm -hmm. So so it suggests that exercise doesn't just mask symptoms or anything. It it actually helps build like resilience and, and coping mechanisms that, that last. So it's like exercise is giving our brains a workout too. It's it's strengthening yeah. those uh, neural pathways yeah. that help us, you know, regulate our emotions and navigate all the stress. But is this true for everyone or are, are some people more likely to, uh, to see these long-term benefits than others? Well, another study um, focused specifically on healthy adults. Yeah. And they were assigned to like a six-month aerobic fitness program. And they saw significant improvements not only in their physical fitness yeah but but also in their uh their psychological well-being so it's not just about people who are like already struggling with uh mental health challenges even people who start out feeling you know pretty good can benefit from from regular exercise yeah absolutely the study found that participants experienced improvements in things like body image and self-confidence yeah as well as their ability to manage their emotions right. it's it's like exercise gives you this overall sense of well-being mm -hmm. that, that kind of permeates different aspects of your life. It's, it's like a positive feedback loop, right? Like yeah. you exercise, you feel better physically and mentally, yeah. which makes you more likely to, to stick with it, which yeah. then leads to even more benefits down the line. Oh, yeah. It's a win-win. Exactly. And, and those positive feelings and, you know, improvements in self-worth, mm -hmm. they can actually help reduce the likelihood of you know, experiencing depression or anxiety in the future. It's yeah. like you're, you're building up a reserve of mental strength and uh, resilience. I love that. Like we're putting money in the bank for our for our future mental health. But I, I do want to be, you know, mindful that hmm. we're not we're not painting exercises as like a cure all. I mean, oh, life yeah. can be complicated. Yeah. And, and mental health is, is influenced by so many factors. You're, you're absolutely right. This uh, this book and the research in general yeah. right. is not suggesting that exercise is like a magic bullet. I mean, yeah. genetics, environment, social support, trauma, all of these things play a role. Yeah, for sure. So it's important to to acknowledge that complexity, right? Yeah. But also to to recognize that exercise can be a significant factor in in tipping the scales towards better mental health, both in the, you know, the short term and long term. Precisely. And what's empowering is that it's something that's, you know, largely within our control. We mm -hmm. we have the power to choose to move our bodies and ex experience those, you know, positive mental health benefits. It's it's like taking an active role in in shaping our own well-being. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
while the research is is compelling, I'm sure some people are wondering, like, does that matter what kind of exercise you do? Is is running better than yoga? Is weightlifting as as effective as dancing? That's a that's a common question, well, I, and yeah. the truth is, there's no uh, one size fits all answer. The type and intensity of exercise that works best for someone can vary depending on their individual needs and, yeah. and preferences mm -hmm. and, and physical ability. So it's not about finding the the perfect exercise, yeah. but about finding what you enjoy, what you can you know realistically incorporate into your lifestyle. Exactly. Whether it's going for a brisk walk in nature, uh, joining a dance class, hitting the gym, or swimming laps in the pool, the key is to find something that you genuinely look forward to. And that, that you can sustain over time. And and don't be afraid to experiment. You know, try different things and see what, what resonates with you. That's that's such great advice. And I, and I think it's important to add that, you know, if, if someone is dealing with, with a mental health condition, it's always a good idea to, yeah. you know, talk to their doctor or therapist about incorporating exercise into their treatment plan. Absolutely. Yeah. They can, you know, help determine the, the right type and intensity of exercise, yeah. taking into account any underlying conditions or, or medications. And, and they can provide support and guidance along the way. This deep dive has been um, incredibly insightful so far. We've uncovered some some truly fascinating research that highlights the, the profound connection between exercise and uh, mental well-being. But it's it's one thing to, to understand the research and, and quite another to actually like apply it to our own lives. You're, you're exactly right. The real power lies in you know taking this knowledge yeah. and turning it into into action. Okay, so we've we've explored all this amazing research, right? Yeah. And and we've uncovered this this powerful connection between exercise and uh, mental well being. But now comes the the real challenge, like how do we actually put this knowledge into practice? You know, it's easy to get all excited about the idea of right. exercise boosting our mood and building resilience, but then mm. then real life gets in the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you hit the nail on the head. It's that that bridge between like knowing and doing. I can be uh, tricky to cross, but yeah. but I think uh, I think the first step is simply shifting our our mindset. What do you What do you mean by that? Well, we're so used to thinking of exercise as something mm. you know we should do for mm -hmm. weight loss or physical health, right? But what if we what if we started viewing it as like an essential part of our mental health toolkit? What if it wasn't a chore? Yeah. But but an investment in feeling better, thinking clearer, and and navigating life's ups and downs with, you know, more resilience. I love that that reframing. It's not about punishment or or obligation, but uh but empowerment. It's like saying, "Hey, I'm I'm worth taking care of." both physically and mentally. Exactly. And once you once you embrace that mindset shift, mm. it becomes easier to identify opportunities to to incorporate more movement into your day. And and it doesn't have to be about joining a gym or, or training for a marathon or anything, no, right? I, no, not at all. We're we're talking about those uh those small yeah. everyday choices that can make a big difference over time. Absolutely. Taking the stairs instead of the elevator, mm -hmm. parking farther away from the store, walking or biking to errands instead of driving, you know. Uh -huh. These these little things add up. What about finding ways to to move more throughout the workday? Especially for you know, for those of us who are who are glued to our desks yeah. for hours on end. Yeah, there's so many creative solutions for that. Like set a timer to get up and stretch every hour. Take walking meetings or or even invest in a standing desk. Right, right. And and let's not forget the power of simply getting outside. Like nature has this incredible ability to to calm our minds and and lift our spirits. Oh, for sure. A brisk walk in the park, mm -hmm. a hike in the woods, even just sitting on a bench and soaking up some sunshine can do wonders for your for your mental state. But but let's be real. Sometimes motivation can be a, a struggle, even even when we we know exercise is good for us. So any any tips for those days when when getting moving feels like, like an impossible task? Well, first, remember that that consistency is key, mm. but it doesn't have to mean perfection. Don't don't beat yourself up if, if you miss a workout or two. Just focus on on getting back on track as soon as you can. OK. And, and what about those days when when even even a short walk feels overwhelming. It's it's okay to start small. Even five or ten minutes of movement is is better than none. Put on some music and dance around your living room. Do some gentle stretches. Or or simply step outside and take a few deep breaths. Right. It's it's about meeting yourself where you're at mm -hmm. and and finding something that, that feels doable in that moment. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're still struggling to to find the motivation or or need uh, extra support, 
don't hesitate to to reach out for help. Yeah, there are, there are so many resources available. Talk to to a friend or family member who enjoys exercise. Join a fitness class, mm-hmm. or or consider working with a personal trainer. Having that that accountability and and support can make a big difference. As we wrap up this this deep dive, I. I want to leave you with one final thought. You've you've heard the research. You've you've learned the tips. Now now it's time to take action. Correct. What's what's one small step you can commit to today to incorporate more movement into your life? It, it could be anything. Scheduling a walk with a friend, <laughs> signing up for yoga class, or or simply setting a reminder to to get up and stretch every hour. Remember, every step you right. take towards you know yeah. prioritizing your mental health through movement is a step in the right direction. Beautifully said. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the fascinating world of exercise and uh, mental well-being. We we hope you feel inspired to, to take what you've learned and, and yeah. make movement a part of, of your daily routine. Remember, your mental health matters and you deserve to, to feel your best. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep moving.